Hi everyone, welcome back to the another video of Venus Academy. So guys, in our previous videos, we have seen the 3D printing processes such as stereolithography and fuse deposition modeling. So now over here in this particular video, we are going to learn about the another 3D printing process or else rapid prototyping process. We can call it as the SLS process that is selective laser sintering process. So guys, in this particular video, we are going to learn the actual process of the SLS and uh, its advantages, disadvantages, its uh, working along with some sort of the applications so basically we all know about the sintering so sintering is somewhat related to the powder technology and in this particular sintering process the powder which is there it it, it is heated just below the melting point and then this particular powder gets fused together to form a solid uh, object so this particular process is somewhat related to the same sintering process but over here the sintering is carried out by laser so this laser can be of the co2 laser or as the nitrogen layer that is depends upon the requirement and the type of the fusion that we require so guys if you are new to my education channel engineers academy kindly subscribe to my education channel engineers academy and please press the bell icon so whenever i upload such kind of educational stuffs so you will get a, you will get instant notification so without wasting any time let's begin with our today's topic of sls selective laser sintering So this particular SLS selective laser sintering process is a kind of a 3D printing technology or as we can call it as a rapid prototyping or else additive manufacturing process. So it is very similar to the previous processes such as the stereolithography and uh, the fused deposition modeling process. In stereolithography we have used the liquid polymer whereas in fused deposition modeling we have used the filaments of uh, plastics. So now over here in this particular process of SLS, we are going to use the powder. The powder can be of the plastic or else it can be of the ceramics, glass or else different metals. So suppose if the metals are used in powder form, then that particular technology shall be called as the direct metal laser sintering DMLS. So this particular process we will see in our next video. So in this particular video, we are going to learn about the uh, plastic which is there in powder form. The majority of the material which is used over here in this particular process is the nylon that is nylon 11 and nylon 12. So the 11 and 12, these are the, you know, uh, rankings based upon the carbon deposition of the material or its carbon composition of the materials. Other material that is frequently used, which is PA11 and PA12. That is nothing but the polyamides 11 and 12, which is differs in uh, like percentage of the carbon. That is the 11 and 12 that represents the carbon uh, carbon content. So these are the you know materials which is used in selective laser sintering process. So now let's understand what is exactly what happens in the SLS process. So just like our previous processes of stereolithography and FDM, we also require a 3D model which gets you know. Uh, split it into the layers layers by layers stl formats so this stl will be the input file that is standard tessellation language and this will be the input file to my printer now this printer you know this calculates the corresponding geometries of the objects that is layer by layer geometries of the objects and this printer is gets connected to the laser so now this particular laser can be of the co2 laser or as the nitrogen based so that particular CO2 or the nitrogen that depends upon the type of the surface finish that we required and the type of the fusion which requires. So over here in this particular SLS process, the powder form, the plastic or let's say the nylon which is there in powder form which is used. Now over here we have got these two chambers, okay. The one chamber is filled up of powder and the second chamber is also filled up with the powders. In the second chamber, the actual material will get formed, the actual model gets manufactured in the second chamber. In the first chamber, the powder which is there and just uh, inside that particular chamber, there is a provision of lifting. So that this particular powder or as the uh, stock of the powder will get lifted upwards and this particular powder gets transferred into the second chamber so that in the second chamber, the actual manufacturing can occur. So guys, over here you can see that this is the actual representation of this uh, SLS printer. So now this SLS printer, the computer is connected to the laser and this particular laser is having the provision that is 
it can track the accurate geometries so inside these two chambers there is a provision to heat the powder just below the melting point of the corresponding material when the stock of the powder in the first chamber gets lifted up okay there will be a roller so this particular roller can be called as a leveler so this particular leveler levels up the powder and forms a particular layer this particular layer can be of the 50 to 300 microns and this particular laser gets projected on that particular layer projecting the different geometries that the actual required object so as the laser hits the that particular particles the particles are fused together to form a solid joint okay and after that when a particular layer gets completed the the second chamber the layer on the second chamber gets that this particular second chamber will be having the provision to go down so that the first layer will go down and the corresponding the second layer on the surface of the first layer so that the again the leveler it will push out the powder from the first chamber to the second chamber corresponding to the another layer and prepares the another layer so in the second layer also the same occurs that is the laser projected on the second layer it will forms a it will form that particular geometry and these two layers are gets fused together corresponding to form a layer on layer to form a 3d model or 3d required part so guys, this is how the actual manufacturing gets occurred in the case of the selective laser sintering process. The actual sintering gets occurred over here in this particular case. So once the required object is formed, it is then removed from that particular second chamber and the like there will be some uh, sort of the excessive powder which is there on that particular uh, part. It is then removed. Then this particular part is sent for the finishing operations. So now the finishing operations such as tumbling, such as the, in this case, some sort of the vibratory like materials are there and that in that particular materials, this particular part is placed and due to the vibratory movement, the excessive powder gets removed. So that is the process of tumbling. It is the finishing process. Painting is there. Dyeing is there. Stove enameling. So we are in stove enameling uh, like the spray painting can occur in this case, a particular like on the surface of the object there will be a smooth layer which gets formed and this is a type of the finishing operation basically in case of the metals the metal coatings is there binding powder coating and flocking so these are the some sort of the operations which are carried out once the object is there once the output object is formed from this sls process the materials which are used over here in this particular process can be of the thermoplastic or else ceramics some sort of the glass and uh, in metals also and the surface finish that we are getting over here that can be of the rough surface finish which we get in some sort of the casting or else in some sort of the powder technology products this type of the technology is high costly and you, there are a lot of like complicated parts complicated shape which cannot be manufactured in stereo lithography and in fdm fused deposition modeling process so that parts can be easily manufactured over here in this particular process as in this particular process we does not require any kind of the external support that we have required in stereo lithography and fdm process over here in this particular process the sand which is surrounded by the uh, by that particular uh, object this particular sand that is of we can call it as the uh, unfused sand or as free sand so this particular free sand can be used as a support so that's why this lot of integrated shapes or else integrated uh, objects which does requires a complicated designs that can be easily manufactured by using this kind of the technology also some so in some cases like there are a lot of objects like a small small parts which can be manufactured in one shot in this particular process so this is the some this is a process which is can be suitable for the mass production for the less part and this particular process is used due to its accuracy and precision in some sort of the aerospace industries and in some sort of the pharmaceuticals industries and in some defense applications as well so guys that was all about the selective laser sintering process i hope you like my video if you having any doubts any queries please do comment below and please do subscribe to my education channel ingenious academy thank you so much guys for watching this video Oh, 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 oh,